play Saturday, or how are you looking? I don't know if he can play Saturday yet. His practice was um, basically non-contact today, so we'll get an evaluation from the the training staff um, after uh, our uh, our dealings here, and we'll get a better indication of where he is tomorrow morning. Well, it's, it's, it's been a year long monkey wrench when it comes to injuries, really. Um, you know, the final nail in the coffin was, was Nuge going out the game. We put them together again. Um, we wanted to see the three center scenario, uh, when Nuge got back and we had to give him a little time to get his feet going again and timing. And I felt, uh, when we went to uh, Arizona, that it was time he he began to look good, and it was time to put them together. Now, so we got 10, 12 shifts out of them again, and that was it. So, um, monkey wrench, yes. Like, you still see Nuge he's a center. And you see Leon always the guy who flip flop back and forth. I think so. I think that's fair to say. I think Nuge is more comfortable in the middle. Leon, if we played Leon in the middle, I think he can become a very, very good centerman big, strong, protect pucks, but he can do that off the wing as well. And uh, we're not very restrictive when it comes to uh, to center or wing um, in, in any of the zones. It's a starting spot. It's a familiar spot that you need to go to. Uh, but if you're the first guy back, we're okay with you playing down low, even if you're, you are a winger. So is that how you worked in, in San Jose? Like Pavelski was back before Joe. Joe. Yep. Both centers, lefty and righty, taking face-offs in the offensive zone. Um, you know, they're all over the place. They're they're interchangeable pieces. They're they're um, they're active. But the first guy back was uh, our low guy, and and it didn't matter what position you were. So I, I look at them more as forwards than centers and wingers. Um, um, although I would put more emphasis on the center ice position if I was asked. Well, he was free in the first 30. People were trying to figure out who this guy is, and you know they sent him back to junior. I don't think there was a big threat of uh, of him lighting it up or anything like that. And then all of a sudden, he was a legitimate first or second line player in the NHL. And uh, team's tactics changed; they matched the the uh, defenseman up against him and that type of stuff. Especially when Connor went out, he took the workload on, and it. it uh, it changed eventually, um, but he's also uh, a young man that's hauled around a lot of big bodies for for a long time this season. He's done a lot of heavy lifting, um, and at times it still catches up with him. But uh, I think his future is so bright. He's um, he's sometimes too hard on himself, and he's got to learn that the game isn't perfect and he's not perfect. But you like the fact that he's striving to get there. Um, Party's probably closer than Griba. Griba's has skated a couple times now and needs needs some work. Uh, Party, uh, you know, missed some days, but still got light skates in uh, when he was dealing with his personal thing. And um, we'll make those decisions on Saturday. But I don't think you're going to see uh, Gribes on Saturday. Party, is he in one of those situations where he got to a new team and he wanted to play every game? So you would know something about him. He played enough games for the organization to know, okay, maybe we'll sign him again, or is it still up in the air? Um, I think that question is, is hard to answer right now, not only for, for Adam's situation, but for, for a lot of players. Um, we're, we're getting there. The guys that have been around all year, you have a good idea of what their strengths and weaknesses are. The ones that are short-term or shorter-term players, you're still trying to figure them out a little bit. And it's not just Adam because he's been hurt. But uh, a number of the others, and, and um, you know, it would be nice to have another 15 or 20 games to play uh, to play Adam and figure him out a little bit more. But that's just not the way it's worked out. So we'll have to make, um, and it's a two-way street. He'll have to make some decisions. We'll have to make some some decisions moving forward. Not only in his case, but for a lot of the the free agent players. Todd, I know you've talked about him a lot recently in weeks, but uh, Patrick Maroon, when you coached against him as a player with the Ducks. How has your opinion changed from him now seeing him around the room, around the guys, and on the ice for you as well? Um, on the ice, it hasn't changed a lot. I, I, we're seeing the, the player that we saw um, 
the Sharks team play against time and time again. And most of the nights we played, he was with Perry and Getzlav, and they were, you know, they were a focal point. They just are. So um, not a lot different on the ice situation where you get to know him as a, as a personality, a, a, you know, his ability to, uh, to speak up in the locker room, how he interacts with his teammates. Uh, I think he actually enjoys, really enjoys playing the game. He has fun with it. Um, he's able to, uh, uh, to, to have a little comic relief every now and then, but he also has a very serious side to him. And um, he's already created a presence in the locker room that's real positive. I think players look to him. And that, uh, that's only, what's that been, a month. So he's done a good job so far, and we want him to continue to grow those, those skills. Todd, oh, sorry, did you Yeah, just one more. Yeah, okay. are you just surprised at how quickly a player can come in, even with playoff experience, but comes in and becomes a leader, and, and how quickly your team is? Um, it, it doesn't always happen that easily, but I, I think he's, he's the type of player that we've needed and wanted. He's had success right away. He's exposed himself to the to his teammates as far as his personality and and his ability to interact. So he's a likable guy, and um, you know his, his personality has allowed him to do that. I believe. After the Anaheim game, a couple of guys said that, that they're able to limit goals against because of what they do in the neutral zone. But I think I asked you a neutral zone question earlier in the mm-hmm. season as well. What what happens there that that gives you guys trouble? You know, like, like we've asked you both. Yeah, no, the neutral zone, they are, uh, they're not doing much uh, different, they're not doing too many different things than than a lot of the other teams in the league. Um, Their talent level is very high with a very mobile group of defensemen, and uh, they're strong through the middle. They have a commitment level that's very high going through Kessler on his matchups, and um, he takes a lot of pride in that side of the puck, and he kind of drags some of the other other players along. But tactically, there's not a lot different than... uh, than what other teams are doing. They're just doing it quicker and harder and they're uh, a little more aggressive. They've got a, a nice mix of players there now to, to get some of those things done. So do you think that's been a consistent obstacle for you guys though, is when teams control that area at a high level or play in that area at a high level? It, it can be, yeah. We have to get better in that area and that's, uh, you know, we go back to the, the question I think I asked earlier in the year, who's more important, the quarterback or the receivers? I don't know what the answer is. Ian. You can have 10 great receivers. If the quarterback never gets them the ball, they're useless. Um, you can have a great quarterback. Receivers don't run the routes or, or hit their spots at a given time. The quarterback's useless. It has to be a good mesh, and we're still working on that. So is that transporting the puck up from your, your defense? Or is that guys not getting the right spots to receive a pass? And it's working into position. It's passing skills. It's um, receiving skills. It's understanding where pressure's coming from. It's the ability to move it up before a very disciplined neutral zone four check sets up, which is in an ideal world, teams that transition real quick get that done before they're even in, in their checking positions. Um, some of it's foot speed, uh, anticipation skills. There's a lot of factors that go into, uh, into beating a, a real disciplined group. Is Connor's strength that he's faster with puck almost than when he doesn't have the puck? A lot of guys can skate fast, but when he's skating fast with the puck, he's even skating faster. Yeah, um, probably the majority of players slow down a, a, a smidge when they, when they get the puck. Um, just they're, they have to get all the pieces together and handle the puck and push it. I'm not sure Connor's in that, in that situation. He, maybe he does accelerate more, but he certainly doesn't slow down. And... Um, that may surprise some some defensemen. Like I, I talk to other players, they say that they, his skating posture is, seems to be so much better than other players. Straight up, and he, he can't hit it from this side. He can't hit it from this side. Well, he's slippery. He uh, at at high speeds he has the ability to slide off checks, and and you know there was a guy that used to play here. I think he wore 99, and everybody said he was so hard to. Uh, you know, to get a piece of. Patrick Kane's that way right now. You don't see him on the highlights getting buried. He's got such good instincts, and then he's slippery. He has the ability to, to slide off. Connor does that at high speeds.